you know, you you are known just as much um, as a solo artist as you are for being part of Boys in the Hood. And, mm -hmm. and we'll get to that for a second. But, you know, Boys in the Hood at that time, it consisted of Jeezy, um, uh, Jody Breeze, Guy, Duke. Um, oh. Who else was in that? It was those four at that, at, at, at that time. Did yeah, you know cool. any of them? Did you have a relationship with any of them? Oh, no. I know none of them. That's crazy. Okay, so when you find, when you originally got into the camp, Block tell you, yo, you need to rap this record. How long was it before you really started to work with him on a consistent basis? Oh. Uh, you know, it, it, this was, it was a school over there. And it, it wasn't no, like you, you know what I'm saying? You had to, you had to work. You know what I'm saying? No matter what you had going on, you had to work. So it wasn't no way I was going, you know, just come in and start working with people. You got to sit down. You got to learn. You know, you first thing you learn is, man, make yourself useful. Ain't nobody. It's, it's already. It's, a, it's already records and producers. How can you make yourself useful at the studio? So you know. The first thing for me was like I can I see what they, what they what niggas don't like to do. They don't like to, they don't like to go get blunts. They don't like to go get their own food and drinks and and, and niggas don't like to take it out of trash. I'm gonna make myself available for that. That way, I can I gotta I gotta no matter how it turn out because of where I've come from and where I've been through. I know you gotta make yourself useful, no matter what how it turn out. I'm I'm a I'm an asset, not a liability. And um, from that, I would you know uh, wait around until one of the studios open up, one they go to the club or go hang out with some girls or something. And I slide in the studio, you know, get my you know build. I was building my craft, not knowing I was building my craft. Thought I was making hit records every time. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was building on building on my craft. So by the time it took like a year. So like eight months, eight months before, eight months, of, I think, uh, every day promoting how you promote and uh, being in the studio as much as you could be in the studio before that record said, before Hood figure said pop. And probably like four or five months before that, um, I was basically, it was just basically putting verses on, on the, uh, on all the Boys in the Hood songs that was already there because they was already working. And then, you know, a couple hooks. And by the time that Hood figure record blew, the Boys in the Hood album was pretty much done. You know what I'm saying? So it set it set it up with like we could we could follow behind Jock on his promo tour and then and then bounce off that Boys in the Hood promo tour for the album. And then bounce off that, I was able to drop a solo, you know, album simultaneously crazy, but uh, that's kind of how it was. That's how it Yo, was. I love, I love the fact that you said you kind of made yourself indispensable by, by humbling yourself, for lack of a better way to put it. Dudes didn't want to go get blunts. Oh, I'll run to the store. Ain't no problem. Y'all don't want to take out the trash. Not a problem. I do that. And when they was going to the club or when the studio was just opening and the most of the artists asleep from the night before, that's when you took advantage of the time. Studio just opening, they'll be here two, three hours later. That mean I got two, three hours worth of time. They go to the club at night, studio clear out. That mean I got two, three hours worth of time. I, I think that that part of your story is so super dope, man. And it's so, it, because people need to hear that part. The, the, the literally humbling yourself and doing the things that nobody else wanted to do. And in the interim, to your point, that's where I really learned my craft. That's where I honed my skills right there. Not even realizing that that's what I was doing. You know, that, that movement at that time um, was insane. You know, I had a conversation with Block and he told me, he was like, yo, 
you know, Puff gave him something like 15 mil, um, you know, for 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 Jock and for um, Boys in the Hood and to really get that Bad Boy South thing off the ground. So I know y'all was up and moving at that point. Then Boys in the Hood come out and they just took over. Like, like you know, killed the game. Uh, at the time that they're blowing, your first single hadn't dropped. So are you able to go on the road with them at that point? No, not, no, not, uh, not initially, not initially. First of all, I had to learn, I had to, uh, that was, that's, that, that helped me, that helped me too, even though I wanted to, of course, you know what I'm saying? Uh, before you get on, you know, that's that fire. That's the, uh, I'm going to first a couple of times I went out on the road, um, Block was with me. He knew whatever he would he, strategic, strategic. So he like, you know, we ride, we doing, but he don't tell me he finna he finna throw me on stage. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at these crowds, I'm like, this this is crazy. Oh yeah, hey Rico, hey, go Rico, I go back there. They hand me a mic. What you doing? Go out, go, go go do your thing. Man, I don't know no movements. And that's a whole nother thing. I had this up, another part of the game. I don't know none of this. So I remember the first time I went out, I was in Memphis. And I stepped out and I was doing a little film folks were looking at me. And I heard a girl say, that ain't no fucking young job. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I, a Heineken bottle said, <laughs> I said, man. Bro, I would if I could have gave up right then, I would have. Like, boy, this is gonna be this is disappointing. Yeah, the record dope and it's going so well, but these folk don't like me. And not knowing, they don't know you. You know what I'm saying? They, they you gotta think that ain't they didn't come here to see you. They came, uh -huh. see, you know, they came for the hits, they came for the man, the man that I was job. Um, and I'm thankful that, you know, you know, Jock didn't ever hate on me or you know what I'm saying? Push me down or, or, or belittle me. You know what I'm saying? Or, or to where I felt uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Uh, following in his footsteps, cause dog was marching in a big way, and um, I'm 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 appreciative of uh, of block throwing me in the fire. He knew I was gonna get burnt, and he knew how to deal with it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Man, oh man, shut up, bro. We gonna do you. You gotta you gotta get you gotta get in it. You gotta get in that fire. Get in the water until you learn how to swim. Ain't nobody finna let you drown. But you got to get in that water. So, yeah. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.